All right, welcome back everyone. I'm Nick. In this video, we're gonna talk about backgrounds and overlays. And they're pretty self-explanatory. The background goes behind an object, the overlay goes in front. Uh, but these are super powerful in SwiftUI and often overlooked, especially by beginners. Because we can add backgrounds on backgrounds and overlays, and we can mix and match a bunch of backgrounds and overlays to get some really, really cool effects. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can implement them how we can customize them by changing their size and their alignment, uh, and overall just get you comfortable using backgrounds and overlays. Because again, they are often overlooked, but they are so, so powerful, and if you can become a master at understanding how these layers work, you can become an expert at SwiftUI in no time. All right, so I'm back once again in our Xcode project, and like we always do, let's create a new file for the code in this video. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file, and this again will be a Swift UI view. And let's call this uh, background and overlay bootcamp. Create. Once you're in the file, click resume on the canvas to make sure we're all connected. And in this video, we're talking about backgrounds and overlays. And let's start off by calling dot background, hit enter. And when we get to this point, so far in this course, we've always put a color in here. But you will notice here that it says view and not color. And that's because we can put any view we want into this background. Now, a view could be another screen. It could be another text. It could be a shape or it could be a color. So, so far in this course, we've done colors. We've done color dot red and we just have a plain color on the background. So I'm gonna hit enter to make this background multiple lines here, and let's comment out this color red. So other things we can do in the background, we can do gradients, which we've also learned. We can do linear gradient, open the parentheses, get that completion going. And you can see now that we have a nice gradient in our background. But again, we can add pretty much anything. We can add a shape, so we can do a circle. And now we have a circle in the background. Now it looks a little weird because circle and the text is black, but let's make that circle uh, a different color. Let's call it dot fill and we'll make it blue. And we can make this look a little better by adjusting the frames. So we could either change the frame on the circle or change the frame on the text. So let's do the frame on the text. We'll call it dot frame and let's make it 100 by 100 by center. And now the circle, which is the background on this frame, uh, is 100 by 100 and it looks a little better. And we can also stack backgrounds on top of each other. So we can call dot background again, and let's press enter to make this two lines, and we can add another circle here. This time let's fill this one with color dot red and we can't see it because it's the same size as this circle, but we could add a frame between these two, so we can call dot frame, and let's make this one 120 by 120 and center. Now we can see the circle, the red circle behind the blue circle. So this is a nice easy way to stack views on top of each other. And instead of changing the frame on the text, we could have changed the frame on the circle directly. So I'll, I'm going to cut this frame here. And I'm just going to put it onto the circle. And then I'm going to cut this frame again. And I will put this on the circle. So we have the same output. Uh, but this time, instead of changing the frame on the text directly, we change the actual circle that's on the background layer. So you can start to see all of the possible hundreds of combinations we can do with SwiftUI. We can stack backgrounds and we can put a ton of different objects and layers into each background. So I'm gonna put a gradient into this circle. Let's do linear gradient. And let's just leave it as the default for now. That looks pretty cool. And let's put a linear gradient on the second circle as well. Let's do linear gradient. And let's just use the default colors again. But this time, let's change it from red, instead of red and then blue, let's do blue and then red. So now we have this cool looking circle uh, with just a very few lines of code. 
Now next I want to show you guys overlays and overlays work the same way as backgrounds except they go on top of each other instead of behind each other. So if I put an overlay on the text, it would go in front of the text. So I'm going to delete everything we have here and let's start from scratch again. But this time let's start with a circle. We'll do a circle. Let's set the fill to color dot pink. Let's set the frame on this circle to maybe 100 by 100. And then let's add an overlay. And in the overlay, we can add anything we want. Again, we could do another color, we could do a shape, we can do text. So I'm going to put some text in this overlay. Let's do text. And let's just do maybe a number like uh, one. And then we can go ahead and change the text. We can do dot font dot large title. We can do foreground color white. And again, so now we're stacking the circle and the overlay and this is very clean, efficient code. And we can do combinations of overlays and backgrounds as well. So we can call it dot background. And then I'm gonna put a background. Let's do an, another circle. Let's make this one fill with uh, color dot purple. And let's set the frame on this one. We'll do frame width and height. And since we did 100 here, let's do uh, 110. And we don't need the alignment on these frames, so I'm gonna delete them. And now you can see that the purple circle is behind our original circle and the overlay is in front. Now there's one more thing on overlays and backgrounds that I wanna get into, and that is the alignment. And this is super important and often overlooked when beginners are developing SwiftUI apps. So let's restart one more time. Let's add a rectangle. Let's set the frame of the rectangle to 100 by 100. And we don't need the alignment on the frame. So let's add first an overlay on top of this rectangle. We'll call it dot overlay. And this time when we use the completion, let's use the one with the alignment option here. So hit enter on that. And again, let's make the overlay multiple lines so it's easier to read. Bring that to another line. And in this, in this overlay, let's add another rectangle. This is what we've done before. Let's keep this center. Let's fill this rectangle with color.blue. And let's set a frame on this overlay rectangle to a width of 50, a height of 50, and we'll get rid of the alignment on the frame. I'm gonna hit enter on before the parentheses at the end of this alignment here, just because I like to have these parentheses so we know exactly where each modifier ends. And let's add one more modifier. Let's add dot background. And this time again, let's choose the alignment option. Hit enter on that. Let's make the background section multiple lines and let's add one more rectangle. Let's fill, let's leave the alignment as center. Let's fill this one with color dot red and let's add a frame on this one of 150 by 150 and let's get rid of the alignment on the frame and finally let's put this closing parentheses on another line so our code is nice and easy to read and we can see in the preview that we have our original rectangle which is black we have our overlay rectangle which is on top and it's blue and then we have our background rectangle on the on the bottom which is red and what I want to show you guys is that overlays and backgrounds have alignments and this is so helpful because instead of just putting something in a background like this and it's center we can change the way we want all of these items to stack up so for example we have the overlay which is the blue square here what if we wanted to put this in the top left corner of the main object well we can change the alignment instead of center we can do top leading and now it will be in the top leading of this black. And we can do the opposite with this red rectangle. Instead of pushing it to the top left, we can push it to the bottom right. So we can do dot bottom trailing. And now these views look very basic, but this is how you're gonna get very, very efficient in making Swift UI apps. Because as you know, there are alignments on frames and we've discussed this in a previous video, but there are also alignments on overlays and backgrounds. And so we can really get fancy with some of the things that we're doing. And if you're watching this, I definitely recommend just creating some 
template uh, shapes and texts and adding your own overlays and backgrounds and just playing around with the alignments. Because once you get comfortable with how you can align things, you're gonna be able to make really cool views really quickly. Now, before I end this video, I wanna give you guys one uh, real world example when these overlays and backgrounds might come in handy. So let's delete what we have one more time. I'm gonna use a whole bunch of things that we've learned throughout this course so far. So let's do an image with a system name and let's do heart.fill. So maybe we're gonna make a heart button here. And let's make this a little bit bigger. We'll call dot font dot system with a size of uh, 40. And let's give this a background uh, of a circle. So we'll call dot background. And the alignment is going to be center, which is the default. So I don't need to use this alignment. I'll just leave it as a default. So I'm just gonna use this option with just a background view. And I'm going to press enter and let's add a circle to the background. And I wanna make it a little bit bigger than this image. So we'll call it dot frame. And let's set a width and a height of 100. I think that looks good. And again, we don't need the alignment on this circle, so I'm going to delete it. In Swift, you can always leave these alignments into their code, but if you're not using it and you're using defaults, it's probably better just to delete it because it will clean up and shorten the actual code. And let's fill this circle with a color so it's not black on black. Let's do dot fill. And instead of a plain color, I wanna use a gradient. So let's put this fill on multiple lines and then start typing linear gradient. Open the parentheses and let's put each of these parameters on their own line. So before gradient, press enter. Before start point, press enter. And before end point, press enter. Let's go from the top left to the bottom right. So start point, top leading, end point, bottom trailing. And let's change out these colors. So let's delete this color red and I'm gonna do a color, open the parentheses and start typing color literal. Double click on the color literal and I'm going to do maybe a light purple. And then let's do one more color. Let's open the parentheses, color literal. Double click on that and let's do a darker purple. I think that looks cool and let's change the heart so that it's white because that would look better. So on the image, all we need to do is call dot foreground color dot white. And let's add a quick shadow behind the whole button to give it a little bit of a 3D effect. So I can add the shadow either to the image, I can add it behind the whole background or behind just the circle. And I'm just gonna do behind the circle because I think it'll be a little cleaner. So after this frame of 100 and 100, let's call it dot shadow. And let's use the color radius option. We'll keep it black with a radius and an X of zero. And I want to move it down a little bit so it's not around the entire thing. So we'll give it a Y value of 10. So that moves it down. And this circle is looking really harsh. So let's change it from black to a lighter color. So I want to use a derivative of this of the purple color. So I'm going to copy this purple color, paste it into the shadow. And let's double click on it, go to other. And now I'm just gonna change the opacity of the background layer, of the background color, and let's put it maybe 30%. That's almost too light, so let's give it maybe 50%. And I think that looks good. Let's press X out of that. And now we have a nice shadow behind our button. And one more thing I wanna do is add a little notification icon, as if this was a button in your app that you had notifications on. So on this background here, on this circle frame, I'm gonna call dot overlay, and we're gonna align it to the bottom right, so we need this alignment option. And let's add a circle as the content. So let's do a circle, let's align it to the bottom trailing, and let's give this little notification section a frame. We'll give it a frame with a width of maybe 35, a height of 35. And we don't need the alignment on the frame of the circle, so let's just delete that. So now you can see our, our overlay is in the bottom right corner of our button. Let's make it blue like notifications usually are, so fill color blue. And let's put a little number on top of this. And we can do that 
by calling overlay on our circle. So down here we'll call that overlay. And it's gonna be right in the middle, so I don't need an alignment on this overlay. Well, let's put this as multiple lines. And let's add a text with a number of five. Maybe there's five uh, five notifications right now. Let's call dot font, maybe headline. And foreground color of white. And I think we can make this a little bit better by giving this circle button a shadow as well. And I want to use the same shadow color that we use on this purple. So I'm going to copy this shadow modifier and paste it on so that it's on this circle, not on this text overlay, but on this circle. So we'll paste it here. And this time, instead of moving it down, instead of just moving it down 10, I want to move it, I'm going to move it down five and to the right five. So it's in the bottom right of this. Let's click off it so we can look. And now I just want to review what we did here because this is really starting how we can get really cool and complex views, buttons, shapes in our apps. We added an image. We changed obviously the color and the size of the image. And you can see that heart here. Then we added a background to the image, which is this big circle, the big purple circle. That circle we filled with a gradient, which we did a linear gradient. And then on top of that circle, we added a custom shadow with a derivative color of our circle's color. And then on, as an overlay to that background layer, so an overlay to the circle in our background, we added another circle here. And we added a blue circle, we gave it a frame of 35, and we aligned this new overlay to bottom trailing. And that's why it's on the bottom right. And we can move that circle around just to show you. We can do a uh, top leading. Now it moves to the top right. But let's put it back bottom trailing. And then on top of that blue circle, we added another overlay here with the text. And then we have the, no the notification number of five. So now, as you can start to imagine, there are infinite possibilities that you can do in Swift UI in terms of layering and stacking items. And this is just one version, but I want to show you that you can add backgrounds and overlays to objects, and then you can add backgrounds and overlays to backgrounds and overlays. So you can really stack and get creative with this. So this video was a little longer. I hope you guys are starting to understand why I am going into detail with all of these alignments and all the cool creative things you guys can do once you really master these alignments and these basics. So that's it for this video. Once again, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.